good morning and welcome to the third lecture uh, of the fourth week of this course on fluid dynamics and turbo machines. Uh, in the last lecture, we uh, last two lectures actually, we have dealt with uh, flow over a flat plate. We have uh, used uh, two techniques, the integral and differential approach to look at the flow over a flat plate and uh, give a description of uh, the viscous flow in the boundary layer uh, over a flat plate. In today's lecture, we are uh, going to look at uh, the viscous flow over uh, again a solid surface, but under a little different circumstances, uh, particularly pertaining to the uh, pressure gradient. So, we will uh, look at the, uh, uh, we will introduce a particular uh, thing known as flow separation in this particular, in this uh, lecture. So, let us go to the slide. So, here we have started with flow separation, uh, uh, but actually we uh, want to introduce the concept of the viscous flow, where the pressure gradient outside the boundary layer, we have taken an example for flow of flow through a converging diverging section. So, if you look at this, uh, the lower edge of this looks like a flat plate, but the upper edge uh, there is a converging uh, region there is a flat region parallel to the lower region in the intermediate portion and a diverging region. So, what happens is if we just uh, apply uh, the continuity equation for this flow, we see that the flow uh, velocities will increase as it approach this central region which is the throat of this converging diverging section and uh, as it goes out through the diverging section the flow velocities will reduce. Uh, so, if we apply Bernoulli's equation, we can also say that the in this region as we go towards the center, uh, as the velocity increases, the pressure will reduce and as you go to the diverging section, as the velocity reduces, the pressure will increase. Now, we consider a flow like this, let us say this is the kind of boundary layer, uh, very approximate and we are looking at the flow inside this boundary layer. But uh, outside the boundary layer right now, because of this converging diverging uh, geometry, the pressure gradient is uh, not 0. So, what is the pressure gradient there? So, within this region that means in the converging portion of this section, the pressure gradient is negative dp by dx is less than 0, because as you go along this the pressure is falling, the pressure is reducing. Uh, so, this we have uh, introduced uh, through a tutorial in the last chapter also this is known as favorable pressure gradient. Why is it called a favorable pressure gradient? Because this pressure as the if the if you have this kind of a gradient that means, if you go along x direction uh, the pressure is reducing, the pressure is uh, uh, falling. So, if that is the case that means, the flow is directed from high pressure to low pressure. So, this pressure is actually helping the flow to take place. Uh, is actually helping the flow. So, this is called a favorable pressure gradient that is why it is named as a favorable pressure gradient. It is favorable to the flow. In the throat region if we look at that means, between these two lines if we look at then we get it is of course, like a flat plate there is no change of pressure outside the boundary layer. So, dp by dx is 0, the pressure gradient is 0 in the throat region in the central region. In the diverging section, so the pressure gradient is 0 here. So, in the diverging section, the pressure increases, the velocity reduces. So, the pressure increases according to Bernoulli's equation, and you have a pressure gradient which is positive. So, what does it mean? This means an adverse pressure gradient. That means, if you go along this x, if you travel along this x, pressure is increasing. So, if you, you are facing more and more pressure, or the uh, flow is uh, facing more and more pressure. So, it is opposing the flow, it is not helping the flow, it is opposing the flow. So, that is why it is called adverse pressure gradient. Now, let us look back again at this favorable pressure gradient region that is the converging region. We say, we see that the flow actually decelerates due to friction and the flow accelerates due to pressure gradient. So, effectively the flow will decelerate, but uh, or accelerate whatever, but uh, basically what we uh, see is these are the two roles played by uh, two things, one is friction and other is the pressure gradient. Friction tries to decelerate the flow even if the flow actually accelerate, 
uh, within this region. So, in the near the boundary uh, in the boundary layer region, the shear stresses or the friction uh, skin friction will try to decelerate the flow and the pressure gradient helps the flow. In the intermediate region again the uh, role played by the friction is the same, it decelerates the flow, but pressure gradient has no role to play, it is basically 0, it neither helps the flow nor returns the, uh, it uh, neither helps the flow nor returns the flow. In the diverging section, the flow decelerates due to friction and it also decelerates due to pressure gradient. So, the in this region we see the flow opposes a uh, 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 obstruction both in terms of friction and pressure gradient, both will oppose the flow. And what is the consequence of that? So, to find a consequence of that, the consequence, one consequence could be flow separation. What is flow separation? Now, let us introduce what is flow separation. It means the fluid near the solid surface comes to rest. So, this is not the fluid on the solid surface. The fluid on the solid surface is always at rest by no slip condition it is always at rest, but now when you consider the layer next to the no slip layer that is also at rest. So, that is basically uh, what is meant by saying that flu fluid near the solid surface comes to rest, not only the fluid on the solid surface, but fluid near the solid surface comes to rest. Now, what does it actually mean? So, if we write the velocity. Uh, that is u at y is equal to delta y. Delta y means at a distance, uh, at a very small distance from y is equal to 0. So, this is y is equal to 0, this bottom plate is at y is equal to 0. At a small distance from the bottom plate is actually at a distance y is equal to delta y, 0 plus delta y that is delta y. So, at that position if we just uh, expand it using a Taylor series, we see that it is it will be equal to y at y is uh, sorry u at y is equal to 0, velocity at y is equal to 0 plus del u by del y at y is equal to 0 into delta y. Now, what is this part? This is already 0, this part is already 0 by no slip condition and now by the definition of flow separation uh, that is fluid near the solid surface, uh, surface comes to rest, we say this is also 0. So, if the separation has to take, uh, take place then y at uh, the on the plate is 0, near the plate is both the velocities are 0. So, we put zeros in both the cases, what does it mean? It means that del u by del y at y is equal to 0 is 0. So, this is actually a sufficient condition for flow separation. If this occurs, you can say that the flow separation has taken place. So, this is basically, uh, this is the uh, first point. Uh, from where this is a condition which can be applied for flow separation, because if the fluid has come to rest at a particular point, the fluid near the wall has come to rest at a particular point, the next point it will move in a backward direction, it will not follow the plate, because it is already at rest. So, it will not follow the plate and it will get separated from the surface. So, this is basically flow separation and this is basically a sufficient condition. If you can say del u by del y is equal to 0, this is a sufficient condition for finding out the condition for flow separation. Now, like I we were uh, seeing this flow through this converging diverging section, let us look at why, why the region where the flow is more likely to separate. Now, why is the flow separating? It is because the flow is decelerating as if you see on the surface of the plate, uh, the flow or the fluid near to the plate loses its momentum we saw that while defining momentum thickness also. So, it loses its momentum. Now, if that is the situation then uh, why it loses its mom uh, momentum? One is due to friction, another is basically could be due to pressure gradient. So, this, so which is the most acute condition if you consider the deceleration of the fluid on the surface of the plate, near to the surface of the plate. So, that condition is the most adverse condition is this, because here both friction and pressure gradient is trying to retard the flow. The second uh, severe condition is this, that the friction is trying to oppose the flow and the pressure gradient has is not playing any role. The least severe condition is this, because friction is of course opposing the flow, but the pressure gradient is trying to accelerate, compensate for the deceleration caused by the friction. 
it is trying to compensate for friction. So, this is least likely for a flow to separate. So, let us start with the intermediate condition that means the pressure gradient is 0. So, can you have a separation? So, can flow separation happen for dp by dx is equal to 0? So, let us seek an answer for this. Uh, why do we start from here? Because we uh, have uh, from our uh, last two lectures, we have already learned something about this kind of a flow where the pressure gradient outside the boundary layer is 0 flow over a flat plate. So, let us try to look at this situation. Can we have a flow separation or can we have more specifically a condition like this met like del u by del y at y is equal to 0 or on the surface of the plate is equal to 0. So, uh, this is the in terms of the likeliness of the flow to separate uh, as far as our discussion has taken place so far, this is intermediate. Okay. So, this is the most adverse. So, let us see in this intermediate condition of likeliness of flow separation, whether the flow can separate here. So, to get an answer to this question, we use uh, the expressions which we had derived in previous lectures. So, one thing is of course, the wall shear stress is mu del u by del y on the surface of the plate. Newton's law of viscosity, we know that and uh, we got an expression for this if you remember uh, from the flow over a flat plate. We got an expression for skin friction coefficient, C f was uh, tau wall, wall shear stress divided by half rho u square and that was from uh, the momentum integral approach, we obtained an expression for the boundary layer thickness and from there we got an expression for the wall shear stress. So, this uh, is true, the, uh, I mean this is the expression uh, by using von Karman approach which we found is quite accurate even uh, with a very rigorous approach for getting the uh, velocity profile and getting the expression for shear stress. Okay, so, now if we have this, let us look back at the sufficient condition for flow separation. Sufficient condition for flow separation is del u by del y at y is equal to 0 is 0. So, then what it means is this have to be 0, del u by del y is 0 means mu cannot be 0, so this is 0. So, if this is 0, it means this expression is 0, nothing can be 0 here. See for a finite value of velocity, this Reynolds number have to be infinity for this has to be 0. So, from this simple exp expression, we can give get some understanding about the likeliness of flow separation over uh, a flat plate or over a uh, for a case where the pressure gradient is 0. We conclude that it cannot happen here for dp by dx is equal to 0 flows cannot separate. We can also extend this because this case dp by dx is less than 0 is less likely than this one to separate because here the pressure gradient is actually helping to compensate for the effect of deceleration due to friction. So, here also we can extend this argument here and say this here also you cannot have flow separation because it is less likely to separate than dp by dx is equal to 0. So, this two case we can exclude. So, only likelihood of flow separation is this dp by dx greater than 0. So, dp by dx greater than 0 where both the friction and pressure gradient opposes the flow has a likelihood of separation, but see this is not sufficient condition, okay. but this is a necessary condition, I am sorry this is a this is uh, not a sufficient condition because you can have pressure gradient is equal, uh, greater than 0 that means flow decelerates due to friction as well as for pressure gradient, but it need not separate still it need not separate because nothing we have uh, shown here we have only said that this is a condition which has more likelihood of separation and in the less likely situation the flow will not separate that is what we have shown. So, here there is a likelihood of separation. So, we say this is a necessary, but not sufficient condition. Sufficient condition is that the wall shear stress should be 0 or del u by del y should be equal to 0. So, in this region, in the adverse pressure gradient region, the flow separation can take place. The reason for which we are so much uh, interested in looking at uh, the likelihood of flow separation is because it has a very important uh, influence on the forces acting on the on a object on a flow uh, past any object. We will see that in the next part of this lecture. So, uh, 
Another thing we can uh, get here, if we look at the x momentum for the boundary layer flow, x momentum equation for the boundary layer flow. If you remember, we derived this equation, it came out like this. So, for a boundary layer flow, uh, we can drop out the uh, viscous term uh, 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 written in form of del 2 u del x 2, because 1 by Reynolds number was coming here. So, we can remove that term. See, this equation is written for a general uh, flow where the pressure gradient is not 0. For the special case of the flow over a flat plate where the pressure gradient is 0, we have removed this term. But uh, for a general case, we are retaining this and try to see what influence, how does this influence the velocity profile. That is what we can see by doing this simple analysis. So, this is the x momentum for the boundary layer flow, which is applicable within this boundary layer. Now, if we move on to the solid surface, that means on this surface here, we see that uh, u is 0 and v is 0. You plug in these two values here u is equal to 0, v is equal to 0. So, you will be left out with only the right hand side, the left hand side disappears and you will be left out with this expression. This is a very important expression. So, we get to know of course, we have applied, uh, we have applied this governing equation on the solid surface only. So, from here we get uh, the value of del 2 u del y 2 on the solid surface second gradient of velocity for the solid surface. This is a very important expression because this will let us know important things about the velocity profile while the flow separates and while the flow do not separate. So, we get this expression uh, and uh, we take the first case where dp by dx is less than 0. That means, the favorable pressure gradient. So, if dp by dx is less than 0, from this expression we can say del 2 u del y 2 at y is equal to 0 and this uh, near to the plate is less than 0, it is negative. What it means? So, for that we take a close up look near the uh, very near to this plate. So, it basically if we draw the origin here, very near to the origin uh, where this expression is applicable, we take a look at that region. And if we look at the velocity profile there, from this expression we can say it will uh, of course, uh, while drawing the velocity profile this axis is given as velocity axis and this axis is given as y axis. So, basically this is how we plot velocity profile not x here, so only velocity here. Okay, so, now we apply this condition that del 2 u del y 2 is less than 0 is negative. So, if we apply that condition to the velocity profile what it means is the velocity profile will look like this. Okay. So, it uh, means uh, see the velocity is actually del u by del y is actually positive, because if you move along y the velocity it was 0 here it is increasing, but it is increasing by this profile. You go to this y it has this velocity, you go to higher value of y the velocity is more. So, del u by del y is greater than 0, but see it increases at a decreasing rate. Suppose you draw a straight line here, it would have increased more. So, if it increase at a decreasing rate, that means the second derivative of the velocity gradient or any gradient in general should be negative less than 0. So, that is what it means in terms of the velocity profile. So, if you look close to the uh, surface, you will see the velocity profile will have this kind of a uh, characteristics, this kind of a nature. The second, so that means the velocity increases with y, but the rate of increase of velocity decreases with y. That is why finally, it merges with the free stream velocity. Uh, the case B is dp by dx is equal to 0, that means pressure gradient is 0. We are looking at the second uh, portion of the converging diverging section or even uh, for a flow over a flat plate. So, uh, this region if you look at what we get is d2 u dy2 is equal to 0. So, if you draw this kind of a velocity profile, you will get this is basically a straight line. That means, okay, velocity is increasing along y direction and the rate at which the velocity is increasing in the y direction is fixed, it is same. It does not change with y. If you go to a different y also, the rate at which the velocity changes with y is the same. Okay. So, this is the condition which is met. So, this is not the total velocity profile. This is if we uh, magnify very close to the origin or very close to the because this expression is only valid uh, at the surface at y is equal to 0. 
So, that is what we have to keep in mind. So, the, this uh, portion very close to the origin it is a straight. What happens for the third situation that means adverse pressure gradient. So, adverse pressure gradient dp by dx is greater than 0. So, it means del 2 u del y 2 is also greater than 0. Now, we can draw the velocity profile for this that is the case c it will look like this. That means, if you go along y velocity is increasing and the rate at which the velocity is increasing is also increasing. So, del 2 u by del y 2 is greater than 0. But see you cannot continue all throughout the boundary layer like this. Finally, it has to come to this kind of a shape for merging to the free steam flow. We will look at the full velocity profile a uh, little later, but uh, uh, at least very near to the surface of the plate the velocity profile will be distinctly different for different pressure gradients for a pressure gradient less than 0, for a pressure gradient equal to 0 and for, for a pressure gradient greater than 0. So, now let us look at it, uh, uh, take a view of the total velocity profile. So, in this region if we look at this is the velocity this will be the velocity profile where the pressure gradient is negative or favorable pressure gradient. If you look at uh, very close to the wall it will be something like this in a region like here this will be almost straight and then it will constantly go. So, this profile will again not be a linear profile or uh, linearly increasing velocity will not linearly increasing away from the surface solid surface, but uh, it will be something like this on the top of the solid surface del 2 u by del y 2 will be 0 signifying a little difference in the velocity profile than the region with favorable pressure gradient. But if you look at a velocity profile in the adverse pressure gradient region it will be very distinctly different. So, how distinctly it is different you see start seeing here it has initially it has a region where del 2 u by del y 2 is greater than 0 in this part and then you have a region where del 2 u by del y 2 will be equal to 0 and then you have a region here where del 2 u by del y 2 will be finally, uh, less than 0 because that is the velocity profile which will smoothly merge it into the boundary layer into the free steam uh, out of the boundary layer that means in, into the free steam. This region mathematically this region where you have del 2 u del y 2 equal to 0 is called the point of inflection where basically the gradient changes sign. So, uh, uh, at that point the gradient where it changes sign gradient of the quantity changes sign it becomes negative to positive or positive to negative is the point at where the gradient of the gradient the double derivative becomes 0. So, as you see here what is happening? So, this velocity profile has no point of inflection it is actually all throughout the velocity profile if you see del 2 u by del y 2 is less than 0 is negative. If you see here this has the point of inflection on the surface of the plate. This in this velocity profile adverse pressure gradient the point of inflection has moved into the fluid ok it is somewhere here. So, it uh, the gradient actually changes sign from here to this. If we go further we meet this condition see here the flow has not separated even though ad, uh, pressure gradient is adverse the flow has not separated this. Uh, so, because this is just a necessary, but not a sufficient condition. The sufficient condition is made little later where what happens del u by del y becomes 0 that means, wall shear stress becomes 0. So, this is the region where actually flow has now started separating and the velocity profile looks something like this. The point of inflection of course, is inside the fluid and if you follow this further you will get a flow reversal that means, now, what happened uh, what has happened is you uh, you see the uh, the flow has actually started decelerating moving in the opposite direction or recirculation. So, this uh, is this is kind of recirculation is a very uh, important feature of many different types of flows which we experience in many practical uh, application. So, this region where you have this flow separated the flow reversal or flow separated. So, as if the flow came up to here and it is now following this separation line and within this region there is a recirculation vortex. So, there is a circular flow or a, uh, a recirculation present and this region is basically the wake of the 
uh, boundary layer. So, basically the boundary layer separates out here because of the adverse pressure gradient and you have a recirculating region here. So, if you have if you have a sufficiently long adverse pressure gradient region in a converging diverging section, you will certainly see this region recirculating region within the flow. So, this uh, slide actually gives us an overview of how uh, the flow characteristics within a boundary layer changes in presence of different types of pressure gradient that is uh, negative pressure gradient or favorable pressure gradient that which is also called as favorable pressure gradient, zero pressure gradient which we already saw in the case of flow over a flat plate and a adverse pressure gradient that means a positive value of pressure gradient. So, we saw that in the case of a adverse pressure gradient or pos positive uh, pressure gradient you can have flow separation, you can have a recirculating region like this and we also saw how the velocity profile uh, looks like for three, this three different regions of the flow. We will use this information now to study more closely flow past a circular, circular cylinder. We will introduce a little bit of it and get the most important concept related to flow past a circular cylinder. So, let us before going into the vis viscous flow, although in this chapter we are uh, looking at the viscous flow, uh, for the context of uh, the circular cylinder, uh, it is important to actually start with an inviscid flow then we uh, get a clear understanding of uh, what is happening in the case of viscous flow. So, let us look at the very quickly look at uh, what happens if there is a inviscid, inviscid flow uh, incident on a circular cylinder. So, this is basically our cylinder and uh, there is a flow which is approaching the cylinder like this. This is again an uniform flow approaching the cylinder in this way. So, if we see this two uh, the, we, uh, there are two red lines which are appearing uh, in this figure which signifies the stagnation streamline. So, basically if you follow the flow here, the flow stagnates finally at the uh, this first point. So, the flow velocity becomes 0. So, this is basically the streamline which ends at the stagnation point and it is called the stagnation streamline. Similarly, there is a rear stagnation point also in this flow the flow moves in this direction, but uh, at that particular point you cannot have any flow velocity. Now, if you consider a fluid element here moving uh, you know on the surface of the flat, it will move something like this and what happens as it moves here? So, from a no velocity region it goes to a high velocity region because it is an inviscid flow. So, you can uh, have velocity even on the surface of the solid surface exactly on the solid surface also and then the flow has to then this fluid particle is actually accelerating it is moving it is um, uh, going to a higher velocity from a stagnant uh, situation to a dynamic situation to a moving situation. So, if we see d u theta u theta being the tangential component of the velocity that means if you draw a tangent to this circle then uh, the velocity along that tangential component is the tangential velocity. So, basically d u theta by d, uh, d theta, uh, theta is basically uh, the angle uh, made subtended by uh, this radius drawn from the first stagnation point to the center to any other radius. So, basically that is our reference the first uh, the reference is the uh, la radial line joining the first stagnation point and the center of this circle. Okay. Uh, I think it will come up a little later in the presentation also. So, uh, if you have d u theta by d theta greater than 0 that means the flow is accelerating that means this is basically a uh, d p by d theta less than 0 that means it is a favorable pressure gradient region. So, this region within the in the cylinder is actually a favorable pressure gradient region like in the case of converging diverging duct we saw up to this point. Beyond this point what happens? Beyond this point actually if you see d u theta by d theta I am sorry d u theta by d theta is less than 0 because it has to again stagnate at this point right. So, it decelerates. So, it the fluid actually accelerates and then decelerates. So, this deceleration is associated with again a, pre a positive pressure gradient 
by using of course, uh, Bernoulli's equation or uh, in the differential form the uh, Euler equation we can say that if the velocity reduces, so the pressure has to increase. So, the pressure gradient dp by d theta is positive here that means this is a if you uh, as you move if the pressure increases that means it is an adverse pressure gradient. Okay. So, the positive pressure gradient is an adverse pressure gradient. Uh, but uh, right now we are considering we are just making this observation, but right now uh, this is not important because we are considering an inviscid flow. We define a parameter called C p, okay, so coefficient of pressure. So, you define this parameter as p minus p infinity by half rho u square. So, in this expression uh, p infinity is actually the free stream pressure, uh, pressure like u is the free stream velocity, this is the free stream pressure and p is the pressure uh, at any point. Okay. So, uh, so, at any point on the surface of this particular uh, cylinder. So, now, uh, okay. so now we can actually uh, plot this C p with respect to theta. So, this theta we already defined theta is basically the angle between this reference line, reference line is the line joining the forward stagnation point. Uh, with the center of the cylinder and any other radial line. So, this is theta. So, if we go along this theta, uh, go from theta is equal to 0 to 180 degree. So, from the forward stagnation point to the rear stagnation point that is theta is equal to 0 to 180 degree and if we plot C p. Okay. So, this particular it will essentially give me the variation of pressure okay. because other quantities p infinity rho and u all are constant this is a non dimensional way of plotting this particular variable pressure. If we plot this it will from the inviscid flow theory uh, or the potential flow theory okay, uh, it will uh, we can get this kind of a variation of pressure. So, what is happening is basically this region uh, if you go through the pressure is reducing and then the pressure is increasing and in an inviscid flow you will see that the pressure recovery is complete that means pressure reduces as it comes to uh, 90 degree that means theta is equal to 90 degree that means uh, this top of the plate uh, sorry the top of the cylinder, uh, but it uh, again recovers to the same value of pressure which was here as it uh, as it approached the forward stagnation point. So, forward stagnation point and rear stagnation point the pressures are same. So, there is a complete pressure recovery. Now, we can use this pressure information to get the drag force on this particular cylinder. So, this drag actually results from two things one is the friction drag that means uh, due to viscosity the flow decelerates of course, this is an inviscid flow. So, that is not important here the friction drag another is the pressure drag what is pressure drag pressure drag is we know that if you have to find out the net force acting on a control volume we have to find out what is the uh, pressure around that control volume like that if you have uh, to find out the force on this particular cylinder we should know what is the pressure at different points within the cylinder and then find out what is the force acting. To write a exact expression for this friction drag can be written as 0 to 2 pi integrated over 0 to 2 pi. So, the entire cylinder uh, wall shear stress multiplied by r into d theta. So, r d theta is basically the arc length multiplied by 1 will be the area. So, r is basically the radius of this cylinder. Now, this is the friction drag which will be 0 in this case because this is an inviscid flow. Now, what is the pressure drag? So, uh, pressure drag is basically uh, equal to again 0 to 2 pi p theta r d theta uh, with the same reasoning r d theta is arc length multiplied by 1 is the area on which the pressure is acting and how is the pressure variation. So, we can write this as from the symmetry because the pressure recovery as we see it is symmetric about theta is equal to 90 degrees. So, we can write this as 2 into 0 to pi p theta r d theta. Now, this is basically our cylinder if you consider this as a cylinder this is how the pressure is acting at the forward and the rear part of the front and the rear part of the cylinder. So, this integration from the symmetry of this pressure as we see from this C p variation or from this uh, particular representation of the pressure on the surface of the cylinder we can say this is also 0. So, what it means is the drag force on this particular cylinder is 0. 
this is of course contradictory to our understanding that if we, uh, we know that if we place a cylinder on a flow, it will experience some drag. But what it, uh, this inviscid flow theory is telling me is that there is no drag because there is a full pressure recovery. So this is a, uh, this is due to the inappropriateness of the inviscid flow theory, uh, and this is also said as D Alembert's paradox. This is a paradox, and this paradox is named after D Alembert because he first pointed out that uh, this paradoxical observation uh, from the inviscid flow theory, from the potential flow theory. Uh, because this uh, this was actually resolved when uh, Ludwig Prandtl uh, proposed the boundary layer theory in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, otherwise, the inviscid flow theory, theory from Euler was already there from 1755, so a long time back. But it was not able to explain the drag on a cylinder. So the drag on a cylinder uh, could be only explained by looking at the viscous flow theory. That's why we are. Uh, we want to now relook at this situation uh, with our understanding of the uh, viscous flow understanding which we have gained from the flow over a flat plate and flow through a converging diverging uh, section. So uh, this actually this uh, happens due to the fact that flow separation is not considered here. Uh, the reason for that is that the flow separation which can be only present in a viscous flow that has not been considered here. So what happens if you consider that? So for going into that, let us uh, look at the flow separation, how what happens to flow separation. We know from our previous uh, uh, slide that uh, the flow separation, the necessary condition for flow separation is adverse pressure gradient and the sufficient condition is wall shear stress becoming 0, we saw that already. Let us apply those criteria to this flow over a circular cylinder. So this is the cylinder again uh, redrawn and the uh, flow is approaching the cylinder with a uniform velocity capital U. This region is a negative pressure gradient that means it is a favorable pressure gradient region and this is positive pressure gradient that is a adverse pressure gradient region. So now we can say if there is a separation, the separation has to happen in this region in the adverse pressure gradient region and actually it happens you can have a laminar separation line like this. So if you this is the separation point actually it happens very close to 80 to 90 degree or 85 to 90 degree depending on the Reynolds number of course. Uh, for a turbulent flow it is even later. So uh, this laminar separation now brings in a new picture of the flow around the cylinder and what is that? We see you have a wake behind the cylinder. So the pressure when we see the rear part of the cylinder, the recovery is not happening because there is a flow recirculation and in this region the pressure is very small. So if you look at from this point of view, now you uh, let us look at the total drag acting on the cylinder. So the friction drag will be given by this because we consider this as a viscous flow, this wall shear stress will not be 0 now. So this is greater than 0. More importantly, which is the major component of the drag force for most reasonable Reynolds number or high Reynolds number flows is the pressure drag. The pressure drag, uh, the expression for this is borrowed from here. So 2 times 0 to pi p theta r d theta, this will be non-zero. How do we know that? Let us look at the coefficient of pressure. So if you look at the coefficient of pressure here, the plot of that, then you see the co it follows the inviscid curve up to some point, but after that there is a adverse pressure gradient even before theta is equal to 90 degree. The reason for that is basically the influence of the wake actually changes the shape of the body and makes it to actually separate or the adverse pressure gradient to exist even before theta is equal to 90 degree. So without going into a, too much of details into that, we make a note of the fact that for a laminar separation, the Cp that the coefficient of pressure varies something like this. Okay, so uh, this rear part, the pressure recovery part does not exist. So the pressure is very low in the wake region. 
So, now if you find the pressure drag in this region you have a positive pressure in this region you have a uh, I mean pressure uh, force positive pressure force force uh, arising due to the pressure acting in the positive x direction. In this region you have a uh, force acting due to pressure uh, in the negative x direction, but the force arising due to pressure in the negative x direction is much lesser because the pressure itself is very slow, small as compared to the pressure in the uh, front side. So, this negative force is less and the net force will be in the positive x direction and so you have a pressure drag which is greater than 0 which is also called form drag because it uh, depends on the form of this particular uh, geometry. So, in this case it is a uh, circular cylinder. This is it is not so easy actually to get the expression for this pressure uh, variation for an inviscid flow. So, what uh, people resort to is uh, experimentation. So, in connection with experiment like I was talking uh, about the skin friction coefficient, it is uh, better to introduce coefficients like this which can be obtained experimentally. So, with respect to drag force also we introduce a coefficient known as drag coefficient and uh, what it does is it is actually the, multi, uh, the product of the drag coefficient and the half rho u square uh, will give you the force per unit area. So, multiplied by the frontal area will give you the drag force. So, basically this is the expression for the drag coefficient and this can be experimentally determined. Using dimensional analysis you can show that this drag coefficient actually depends on Reynolds number of the flow. And uh, if you plot this drag coefficient, uh, once you know the drag coefficient you can find out knowing the Reynolds number you can find out uh, what is the drag force acting on the uh, on a on a particular object in this case a circular cylinder. So, basically this approach was able to resolve the D'Alembert paradox by considering the uh, viscous flow boundary layer flow around the cylinder. So, it is a small region around the cylinder which is actually viscous, but it plays a very important role in finding out the drag force acting on the object. So, uh, like we mentioned that this drag coefficient actually is experimentally obtained and if you look at the plot of this drag coefficient uh, with respect to Reynolds number, uh, it looks something like this. So, this is basically, so the drag coefficient actually reduces as the Reynolds number increases. So, this is the laminar part of the flow, till the flow remains laminar, this is basically the variation of the drag coefficient. Without going into there are a lot of correlations for different bodies, different types of bodies for example, right circular cylinder uh, and uh, you know sphere and aerofoils and so and so forth. Uh, the, the coefficients, the drag coefficients as a function of Reynolds number are available in open literature. So, we do not go into the discussion of that, that is basically uh, aerodynamics uh, uh, more description on the effect of the shape of the object on the drag coefficient. But without going into the uh, that, we can now look at what happens uh, afterwards or at higher Reynolds number. So, that means we are going into a turbulent regime. Uh, before going into that, we can uh, take a look at the velocity profile for the laminar versus the turbulent flow. This will be useful in explaining the drag coefficient. So, the velocity profile for laminar is like this, the velocity from the no slip condition to free stream velocity, it uh, the change is gradual, but whereas in the case of turbulent flow, the initial change is very rapid, it is very quick, means that fluid particles near the surface, very near to the surface are at higher velocity in case of a turbulent flow as compared to the laminar flow. Uh, the deceleration is actually less in the case of turbulent flow, so it continues at a higher velocity. So, as the deceleration or retardation of the fluid particle near to the surface is less, uh, what happens as a consequence of that? The flow separation is delayed. See the separation will only happen when the velocity near the plate becomes 0. The play velocity of the fluid on the plate is already 0. The velocity of the particle uh, of fluid particle near the plate becomes 0, but from this velocity profile we can see as the velocities of fluid particles near the plate are more or much uh, more as compared to 
uh, or more closer to the uniform flow velocity or the free stream velocity in case of a turbulent flow. So, this layer to come to zero velocity it will take more time or the fluid can travel through more distance. So, the flow separation is delayed and if you try to look at that uh, uh, delayed separation in this particular figure you will see the separation for a turbulent flow will happen at a later stage. So, it will separate here. So, the wakes, a wake also gets shifted. As a result of this what happens is now we can look at the CP variation, flow separation gets delayed. So, so the CP variation now is like this, the uh, adverse pressure gradient and the separation happens at uh, the rear part of the uh, um, cylinder. Now, if you try to use this particular uh, pressure coefficient or pressure in the expression of the pressure drag, then you naturally you will find that the pressure drag will be lesser in the case of a turbulent flow, because this portion of the cylinder will have very similar pressure as to this portion of the cylinder. So, the effectively you see this region on the top half of the cylinder or uh, this entire region in the entire cylinder will have a much lower pressure as compared to the other side. So, effectively they will contribute to the uh, drag force and because of this delayed transition what happens is the drag force reduces and if you look at the drag coefficient is it drastically falls at the point where the flow becomes turbulent. So, there is a drastic fall in the drag coefficient of course, later on it increases with increasing Reynolds number, but this fall is very uh, easily observable even in the experimental variation of drag coefficient with respect to Reynolds number. So, the pressure drag or the form drag significantly reduces for a turbulent flow. In many cases we use this uh, particular uh, idea that uh, by making a flow turbulent you can delay the transition. One such example is the uh, golf balls. So, if you have seen a golf ball you will see there are dimples on the surface of the balls. Okay. It is not a smooth surface. So, why is it so that you have to dimple the surface of a golf ball? There are other examples of this also, but we are just taking this example to demonstrate the delayed transition in a turbulent flow. So, uh, let us say this is the ball without a dimp without any dimple on the surface. So, the flow is approaching from the top and uh, the separation will take place uh, close to this 90 degree or 85 degree to 90 degree depending on the Reynolds number. Okay. So, this is how the wake will look like. So, now uh, basically the, when we look at the golf ball, this golf ball is actually moving, the flow is stationary, but it is similar to the situation where we make the golf ball stationary and allow the flow to move. So, without dimple this is the situation and uh, the drag force effectively will be due to this entire uh, projected area of this ball. On the other hand, if you see the dimpled golf ball you will see the because of the presence of this roughness on the surface of the golf ball, the transition at the same velocity, this transition at the same velocity of the flow will be transition to turbulence will be earlier and you will have a turbulent flow. You will have a turbulent flow and due to this turbulent flow, the transition will be delayed like what happened here, the turbo, uh, separation was delayed. So, there here also the separation is delayed and as a result of that, now you will have to bother about this part of the projected area which will be acting in terms of the drag force, because this uh, which is the uh, um, drag force resulting from the pressure, which is the major part of the drag force for uh, the kind of Reynolds number for high Reynolds number kind or the kind of Reynolds number which is of interest here. And so, the golf ball because of the presence of these dimples can travel through a long distance. It is very difficult to uh, uh, actually hit a uh, uh, non dimpled golf ball and make it travel through a long distance. So, that is basically an idea uh, which uh, uh, borrowed from fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics to uh, our daily life.
or there are many other examples of this flow separation also. For example, swing of a cricket ball that can also be explained by using this delayed transition in case of a turbulent flow. So, uh, basically uh, in this example, the dimples on a golf ball reduces drag by invoking turbulent separation. So, instead of a laminar separation, uh, when you want to reduce drag, one uh, technique of reducing drag, uh, in the beginning of this course we are uh, talking about uh, reducing drag force and increasing the lift force. So, one way of reducing drag is actually to invoke turbulent separation. Of course, there are other ways also of reducing drag by boundary layer suction and things like that, where again there also we avoid separation of the flow. So, uh, this is one way of invoking, uh, the one way of reducing the drag force by invoking turbulent separation uh, as, oppose, uh, as compared to a laminar separation. This brings us to the end of the third lecture of this week, where we talked about the flow separation and flow past uh, flow in presence of in a boundary layer in presence of uh, pressure gradient. Uh, particularly important is a positive pressure gradient or adverse pressure gradient, which actually results in which can results in flow separation. We looked at the conditions of flow separation, uh, the necessary and sufficient condition for flow separation. We looked at uh, how the uh, flow how uh, uh, in the case of an inviscid flow, uh, the drag force is predicted as 0, which uh, resulted in the D'Alembert paradox and uh, how it this can paradox can be resolved by considering a viscous flow and considering the boundary layer structure. Uh, we gave at the end of this lecture, we gave an example of a uh, uh, application of uh, boundary layer uh, uh, separation. Uh, the uh, in pre in a turbulent flow situation uh, to explain the dimples given or uh, on a golf ball to uh, reduce the drag force on them uh, this brings us to the end of this lecture thank you very much